For my entire life, I've lived in cities. Large, urban centers where people are always busy. On their way to work, worried that coming late might get them fired. Or driving home, disgruntled after a long day's work at some shitty company that trades their time for money. And as anyone who has lived in a city can tell you, there's a sense of urgency running through it. An urgency that for many, myself included, turns into anxiety. It's suffocating. So when I found a game that eases the pain of life and the anxiety of going through it, it was like a breath of fresh air after a long time forced underwater. Life is Strange is a very special game to me, and while others may detest the game for its characters and their lingo, wow, sir. I like Life is Strange for its ability to single-handedly suspend my anxiety and for its incredible characters that immersed me into a different world when reality wasn't a pleasant place to be. Not only for its incredible music choice, but its beautiful art design that still holds up today. And while the characters are a bit pretentious, the story of Life is Strange is gut-wrenching. If you've already played this game, then you know exactly what I'm talking about here. This game is farmed enough eye salt, it makes the Titanic movie seem like a f***ing Family Guy episode. In my opinion, it is worth taking the time out of your day to play the game yourself. It has a free demo you can download on Steam, which I highly encourage you to try. But if you've already played Life is Strange and want a refresher, or just don't care to play it for yourself, this video will hopefully serve as a condensed version of the game while highlighting its best moments and features. This is Life is Strange, the only game that has cured my anxiety. Enjoy. The game starts off quite dramatically. Placing us inside what looks to be a super tornado, destroying the town where the game takes place. Holy shit. Before we can make it to the lighthouse, for shelter however, Whoa. we wake up seemingly having a nightmare in class on an otherwise ordinary day. We are Max Caulfield, an art student, aka the future recipient of a welfare check. A student drops a pencil, a girl throws a paper ball at another, and someone in class gets a call. After we finish class, we speak briefly with the teacher about a photo contest and our non-existent entry. Promptly thereafter, we leave the class to go and refresh ourselves in the bathroom, when we notice a beautiful blue butterfly rests on a bucket. Being a photographer, we follow the butterfly to take a photo when we are suddenly interrupted. It's cool, Nathan. Don't stress. You're okay, bro. Just count to three. Don't be scared. You own this school. If I wanted, I could blow it up. You're the boss. So what do you want? I hope you check the perimeter, as my step-ass would say. Now, let's talk business. I got nothing for you. Wrong. You got hella cash. That's my family, not me. Oh, boo-hoo, poor little rich kid. I know you've been pumping drugs and shit to kids around here. I bet your respectable family would help me out if I went to them. Man, I can see the headlines now. Leave them out of this bitch. I can tell everybody Nathan Prescott is a punk ass who begs like a little girl and talks to himself. You don't know who the I am, or who you're messing around with. Where'd you get that? What are you doing? 
Come on, put that thing down! Don't ever tell me what to do! I'm so sick of people trying to control me! You are going to get in hella more trouble for this than drugs! Nobody would ever even miss your punk ass, would they? Get that gun away from me, psycho! No! Whoa! What the f***? How? How can that be? I was in the bathroom. He shot that poor girl. I held up my hand. And then I was back here. This is the main gameplay element of Life is Strange, allowing us to reverse time and not only give the correct answers and dialogue, but also make changes to the environment to solve puzzles. For now, we have a goal. Keep that emo chick from ending up in the forever box. Now back in the bathroom before the girl gets shot, we use our time rewind powers and some quick thinking to hit the fire alarm, causing a distraction, saving the girl's life. After running out of the bathroom and getting hassled by security and the principal, we go out and man, this game still looks beautiful. Despite being released seven years ago in 2015, the art design still holds up extremely well, using some beautiful lighting effects and some atmospheric audio design. While it's nowhere near its modern realistic counterparts like Red Dead Redemption 2, even in the remaster, it is still extremely charming, but enough sapping around. Our next objective is a flash drive. To get it, we have to solve a rudimentary puzzle to get into the dormitory, after which we head over to the parking lot and give the flash drive back to its owner. When out of nowhere, the murderer from the bathroom recognizes us from earlier. Max Caulfield, right? You're one of the Jefferson's photo groupies? I'm one of his students. What the fuck ever? I know you like to take pictures, especially when you're hiding out in the bathrooms. You best tell me what you saw. Now, answer me! What are you talking about? I know you're new here, but don't even play stupid with me. I'm not new. I've lived here for years. Then you should know the Prescotts own this shithole. Then you don't have to worry about me. Worry about yourself. Do not analyze me! I pay people for that. Worry about yourself, Max Caulfield. Take a step back, Nathan Prescott. Oh man, you're telling me what to do? Get away from her, dude! Hey! Leave him alone! Nobody tells me what to do! Not my parents, not the principal, that. or that whole Let in the go. bathroom! <gasps> Max? Chloe? <laughs> this is Chloe. Being a childhood friend of Max, she saves us from that psycho and takes us to her place to get our camera fixed after that cokehead broke it. My room looks a bit different than the last time you saw it. It's cool, at least we can chill out. Chloe, as you might have noticed, is a typical depiction of someone that uses Twitter. Dyed hair, tattoos, immature, hates men, has daddy issues, the whole nine yards. Chloe is not exactly the most respectable person in this story, but her chemistry with Max is phenomenal. Seeing as how Max is rather timid and shy, Chloe is the exact opposite of Max, loud, obnoxious, and confrontational. But after we hear the following dialogue, she has a good reason to act this way. Put on some music while I medicate. Hey, give me that! Sorry, I wasn't trying to be nosy. Obviously, she was a good friend. It's putting it mildly. That's Rachel Amber. Her missing person posters are all over Blackwell. Yeah, I put them up. She was my angel. After my dad died and you moved, I felt abandoned. Rachel saved my life. Man, I had no idea. Well, you never made much effort to find out. I was 14. We were best friends. So what happened? Did your folks, your mom, try to stop you? My mom was too busy hooked up with Sergeant Shithead. I feel the love. Now, when did Rachel actually disappear? Six months ago. She just left Arcadia. Without a word. Without me. What about her parents? Are they looking for her? They're in denial. Max, I know she's missing. I assume you know more than that. 
Before Rachel left, she said she met somebody who changed her life. And poof. And you haven't heard anything from her since? Like everybody in my life. My dad, you, and Rachel. Gone. Can you put on some music now? After collecting some tools from the garage and attempting to fix our broken hipster camera, we learned that Chloe was friends with a girl called Rachel before she unexpectedly went missing. Something that still haunts Chloe as she still attempts to find the answers to her disappearance. Something we'll find out a lot more about later. For now, we find out that the security guard that hassled us beforehand turned out to be Chloe's stepfather. Yes! Break it down, Max! Yo, turn it off! Turn it off! Dude, the music's not even on! I'm coming up. We need to talk. Who yells at her for smoking that damn reefer? Because you're such a badass, Max, let me show you my new toy. I'm Price. Chloe Price. Bang! Jesus, put that thing down! Chillax, sister. It's not even loaded. Yet. I thought you believed in gun control. Yes, I believe I should control the gun. It's the men who need to be checked. You trust Nathan or David? Anyway, let's sneak out the window. There is one cool place we can hang in this hickle. And so, us and Chloe make our way out of the window and head to talk at the lighthouse about what happened in the bathroom earlier today. Awesome sauce? Totally reminds me of when we were kids. Come on, slow poke! Hold on. Sure you don't want to be alone? Have a seat, Pete. So what do you have on Nathan? He's an elite asshole who sells bad shit cut with laxative. And he dosed me with some drug in his room. What? I met him in some shithole bar that didn't card me. He was too rich for the place and too wasted and he kept flashing bills. Just tell me what happened, Chloe. Now. I was an idiot. I thought he was so blazed it would be an easy score. You needed money that bad? Actually, yes. I owe big time. And I thought I'd have enough for me and Rachel if she showed up. How much do you owe? Three grand plus interest. And before I could get a chunk of that from Nathan, he dosed my drink with some shit. God, Chloe. I can't believe this. I mean, I do. Then what? I know I passed out on the floor. I woke up and that perv was smiling, crawling towards me with a camera. Go on. Everything was a blur. I tried to kick him in the balls and broke a lamp. Nathan freaked, so I managed to bum rush the door and get the hell out. It was insane. Chloe, that is so fucked up. What did you do then? I figured I would make him pay me to keep quiet. So we met in the bathroom. And he brought a gun. That was Nathan's last mistake. He's still dangerous, Chloe. Not just to you. Oh, good thing you notified the principal. I feel safer already. I won't always be there to save you. You were here today, Max. You saved me. I'm still tripping on that. Seeing you after all these years feels like... Destiny. If this is destiny, I hope we can find Rachel. I miss her, Max. This sh pit has taken away everyone I've ever loved. I'd like to drop a bomb on Arcadia Bay and turn it to f***ing glass. Oh no! Not again! Octo 
October 11th? Is this Friday? That's only four days away. Oh no. The tornado is headed straight for the town. Chloe, you're here. I'm back. Oh my lord, this is real, it's real. Oh man, this sucks. Max, what's going on? You totally blacked out. I didn't black out. I had another vision. The town is going to get wiped out by a tornado. Oregon gets about five tornadoes every 20 years. You just zoned. No, no, I saw it. I could actually feel the electricity in the air. Come on, take a breath, okay? Chloe, I'm not crazy. But there's something else I have to tell you. Something... Hardcore. Talk to me, Max. I had the same vision earlier in class. When I came out of it, I discovered I could reverse time. Like I said, not crazy. But hi, right? Listen to me. How do you think I saved you in the bathroom? By reversing time? Yeah, sure. I saw you get shot, Chloe. Saw you actually die. I was able to go back and hit the fire alarm. Okay, I see you're a geek now with a great imagination, but this isn't anime or a video game. People don't have those powers, Max. I don't know what I have, but I have it. And I'm scared shitless. You need to get high. It's been a hell insane fucking day. What the hell is this? Snowflakes? It's like 80 degrees. How? Climate change. Or a storm is coming. Max, start from the beginning. Tell me everything. Congrats, you made it through Life is Strange's first and worst chapter. Due to the fact that the game has to introduce you to its characters and the gameplay of Life is Strange. From here on out, the story only gets juicier. Our second day with our powers starts off like any other. We go to the shower, change into some new clothes, and head out to the diner to have breakfast with Chloe and prove our rewind powers to her. This is where we meet Joyce, Chloe's mother and longtime friend of Max, to which she excuses Madsen, Chloe's stepfather, as she explains that he's a combat veteran who despite his brash demeanor, still cares for Chloe. Speaking of which... Mm, speak of the devil. Mom and Max, together again. And Chloe looking for a free meal. You put your whole damn college fund on your tab. I'm treating Chloe for breakfast. Are you atoning for yesterday? Oh God, Mom, please do not give Max any shit for that. She apologized. I know she did. Max is a good girl, a woman. She's 18 now. Too old to get lectures from you or Sergeant Pepper. Call him David if you don't want to be lectured. You only get one damn slice of bacon a day. Let's talk about your superpower. I don't have any explanation, and I can't explain why I saw that crazy fucking tornado. Come on, that's just a daydream. I want proof you can rewind time. This is all happening so fast. We'll start slow, right here, now. It is now that we have an opportunity to convince Chloe of our superpower. The first test is to tell Chloe exactly what she has in her pockets. These items include 86 cents worth of coins, seven cigarettes, car keys, with a panda keychain, and a parking ticket. Amazeballs. I literally just got chills all over my neck. You, you have to show me more, something way cooler so I will believe you without any doubt. I will predict the future. No way! Next, we have to predict what will transpire in the events following in the next 30 seconds. We do this by paying close attention to our surroundings and picking the correct voice lines after rewinding. If done correctly, this is what follows next. The trucker drops his mug and Joyce rips him a new one. So what happens next? The cop gets an emergency alert on his radio and his partner in the car leaves without him. Well, let's just see how this goes down. Justin and Trevor are fighting and Joyce breaks it up. 
is getting good. Can't wait to see what happens. The jukebox goes crazy as a cockroach crawls on it. Pretty bizarro, Max. But let's see if everything happens like you said. Oops. Did you break another cup? Oh, wait really? Go, Mom. No refill for you. Shh. Well, now I gotta take this call and leave my breakfast. Hey, where's my partner? You called it. But he's off to go bust some skaters. You're a dick. Don't slap me, bitch. Take your fight club outside. He started it. I'm finishing it. Trevor and Justin must be in love. You predicted a cockroach on the jukebox? I pledge allegiance to Max and the power for which she stands. This isn't a toy, Chloe. I do have to be careful how I use it. Screw that! Of course it's a toy! The best toy ever? You can bang anyone with no strings attached, rewind time, and boom! It's like it never happened! Grow up. Now with Chloe thoroughly convinced, we head out of the diner to go test out our new superpower. Before we leave, however, we see a figure watching us in the distance. It seems that we're being pursued. Chloe takes us to her home, away from home. A garbage dump for cars, old washing machines, and teenagers who want to get wasted with some friends. This is where Chloe decides to play with her new gun. After setting up some bottles to shoot, she takes her first shot. Oh yes! Did you see that, Max? Duh. That was so f***ing cool! Now for the second bottle. Watch out, Nathan. Now that is fun. Let's pump up the volume and find me another target. I want to get creative here. Let's see you take a crack at that rusty barrel. Sorry, Mr. Barrel, your time has come. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a ricochet. A stray bullet that is bouncing off of a surface and is incredibly f***ing dangerous. If you've ever wondered why all shooting targets are angled at 45 degrees downward, that's because of, you know what, I, I'll just show you. Bullets are unpredictable. Never shoot at a strong, flat surface that isn't angled. Hey, there you go. You learned something today. I'm proud of you. Now go finish the rest of your orange juice before school, kid. Uber cool. I cannot believe this is for reals. My best friend is a superhero. Now it's your turn to bust a cap. I don't know. Max, your nose. Damn. I don't feel so super. Max! You freaked me out there. Do you feel any better now? A little. Thanks for helping me. Just give me a minute. Okay. Looks like you're ready to lock and load. I don't know about this. Are you afraid of getting in trouble? Oh, boo-hoo. Max is afraid. I know you can handle this. And I'm here to guide you. Make me proud, sister. Hey. It's Thelma and Louise. Or is it Bonnie and Clyde? Excuse us, Frank. Oh, sorry, Chloe. Don't let me get in the way of your bonding. I heard the gunshots and the breaking glass. It's cute that you're playing with guns. Just like me at your age. We're not anything alike, man. We both need money. In fact, you need it so bad, you owe me a sh oh, don't you, Chloe? Huh? You'll get your money. Don't they all say that? You know, even when they're broke and acting tough. What are you hiding there, girly? Let me see. Where did you get that bracelet? A friend, and it's none of your goddamn business. You're my business now, That's and I- That's Rachel's bracelet. Why the f are you wearing her bracelet? Calm yourself, all right? It was a gift. No, it wasn't. You stole that f Give it to me right now, asshole. You better step back before you regret it, girl. I mean it. You want me to cut you? Please. Please, step back. You're kidding. Put that down. 
Here, we are presented with our hardest choice in the game. Do we A, murder someone, or B, not murder someone? Tough choice to make, really. Come on, girly. Shoot me. Ah, oh, Christ. You're more like Abbott and Costello. Nice piece. I'll consider this interest on your loan. Thanks. You have until Friday to pay me, or I'll track you down with this interest. Have a good play, kids. You really stood your ground. I freaked. I don't like guns. It'll be hard to keep Nathan off my ass. My step will have his other gun sealed in an electrified bunker by now. Sorry, Chloe. I've never held a gun on a human being before. Not cool. I know, Max. Really. I'm actually relieved it worked out this way instead. And there are more guns out there. Let's blow. My secret lair didn't feel secret today. At least Frank is gone. He won't f with us again. He just wants his money. I can't believe you basically gave him my gun. Here you go, Frank. You can't keep getting mad at me. Especially for stupid shit. I'm not mad. It adds up in my mind as people letting me down. And I just liked having that gun, man. Now you have me to protect you. I'm just glad you were here. Me too. I think. Chloe, why the hell are you hanging around scary losers like Frank? It's weird. Let's take a break and I'll talk. Feels like a different world, huh? I wish we could stay forever. Can we build another pirate fort and keep the world out? We need a new secret hangout. At least Frank wouldn't find us. Are you okay, Max? Seriously, Chloe, this is scary. What if Frank tries to track us down? I'm sorry. But Frank isn't as hardcore as he fronts. All he cares about is his cash, stash, and mangy dog. Chloe, are you for reals? Frank just took your gun and threatened us. He's armed and clearly dangerous. Max, I know. Crazy shit is the new normal for me. That's why I plan to leave Arcadia Bay without paying Frank off. I think we have to be careful and keep an eye on this guy. Without him eyeballing us, okay? Ah, it's so weird talking to you about this insane crap. We haven't hung out this much since we were tweens, and it's like no time has passed. I wish Rachel was here to meet you. Why? I bet she would hate me. You're not that different. She had... has a great eye for images and for art. Plus, she's a smartass like you. We would all be hella best friends forever. I know she must be as cool as you are. I have no doubt we'll meet soon. Railroad tracks always make me feel better. I have no idea why. Kerouac knew. It's the romance of travel and movement. The sound of the train whistle at Look night. Look at the beat poet here. I'd rather be a good photographer. You are. You just have to stop being afraid. Taking a quick break from Chloe for a picture, we have another flashback at what seems to be the worst opportunity possible. Another vision of a massive tornado destroying Arcadia Bay. Despite seemingly being stuck on absolutely nothing, it is now that we have to use some quick thinking and our rewind powers to free Chloe. Finding a crowbar to bust open the door and a plier set inside, we head to the circuit breaker. But which wire to cut? Now that's the right cable. Yes! I did it! You okay? 
You saved me again! Crazy! Now we're totally bonded for life. Damn, that was close. Aren't you glad I took you away to a nice, quiet, desolate spot? It was cool to spend time in your lair, but I have to get back to school before my next class. Since you're the mysterious superhero, I'll be your faithful chauffeur and companion. My powers might not last, Chloe. That's okay. We will. Forever. Shortly before getting dropped off after our gun-filled shenanigans, Chloe mentions something called Chaos Theory, an attempt to explain the weird occurrences in Arcadia Bay. You altered the course of my destiny, yours, and whoever. Do you know about Chaos Theory? Chaos Theory is the reason space missions get delayed due to weather, or the reason the Enola Gay spared Karkuda's citizens from nuclear hellfire. The unpredictability of large-scale events based on small baseline factors. The idea that the flap of a butterfly's wing in Brazil can set off a tornado in Florida, and minor changes in temperature can change the forecast of the weather. Heading to class, we go for another art lesson when out of the blue, a student rushes in to warn us. In Yo! Some crazy- is going down at the girls' dorm. Zachary, do not come into my class like that ever again. Listen, everybody remain seated. Dismissed. See that? Is this for real? It flipped out. I didn't think she was that messed up. Who is that up there? Kate! She can't die. She can't. Kate, a student and friend of Max, is attempting what the femboys in the audience refer to as a serious fucky wucky trying to land herself in the forever box. TM. It is now that we find the limit and true scope of Max's powers. Not again. Not now. I have to try something. I won't be able to rewind again and again. doing here, Max? Stop! Don't come near me! Not now. It won't work. I don't have any power. Now I have to do this by myself? This, considering our inability to rewind, is the hardest speech check in the game. Succeeding to convince Kate requires several correct decisions in our past that I've purposefully avoided mentioning until now. Kate has been bullied for a video taken of her making out with several people while drugged at a party. To convince her not to self forever sleep, we must first step in between Kate and Chloe's dad to stop him from threatening her. Second, answer Kate's phone call in the diner and ignoring Chloe. Third, erase both the hurt messages outside her door and the link to the humiliating video on the bathroom mirror. Four, you must encourage Kate to go to the police and file a police report with you as her witness. And finally, you have to remember that her father sent her a postcard which you can find in her room. If you fail to do any of these tasks, Kate will nay nay herself off the roof face first. But if you succeed and convince Kate to come down, you will not only save her life, but you will also unlock a special piece of gameplay later on where you visit her in the hospital. Luckily for my monetization tab, in my playthrough, I was able to save her life. After which, we attend a meeting with the principal of Blackwell Academy to talk about what happened to Kate. And with that, the second chapter ends and the tension starts to build up.
Our next chapter starts directly after Kate's attempted self nanny. Deep into the night, we get a text from Chloe ordering us to meet her in front of the college. In our room, we find Kate's buddy, who we're safeguarding while Kate recovers in the hospital. Taking no time to linger on the day's events, we leave the girl's dormitory for a night of explosives, detective work, and incredibly cringy lingo. We hella deserve it. Splish splash. Just make me cringe! <laughs> Get it? Boo, yeah. Like I'm a scary punk ghost. More like a scary punk asshole. Hey, Chloe, I didn't exactly have the greatest day trying to keep my friend from jumping off the roof. I don't think I need you to prank me tonight, okay? Sorry, but you absolutely balls to the walls did save your friend. Kate saved herself. I couldn't even use my power. My head felt like it was being crushed. And then I had no clue what to say to her on that roof. Don't be so modest, Rockstar. Kate is alive because of you. You obviously said the right thing, and your badass power is gonna save us all. We just need to connect the plays. And find out who almost killed Kate. We have to stop this from happening to anybody else. Drum roll, please. I present the spare keys to Blackwell. Thank you, Step Prick. You are such a boss, Chloe. I just... I don't want you to get into any more trouble. Look at all the trouble dropping in Arcadia Bay. At this point, who gives a fuck anymore? We're in it to win it, Max. Lead the way. I'm so glad you're my partner in crime. As long as you're my partner in time. Insert groan here. Before getting to work, however, we spot Victoria, our bully, talking to our teacher, Mr. Jefferson, attempting to win her spot in the Everyday Heroes contest by soliciting the SAGs. Mr. Jefferson, being a devout follower of the Church of Femboys, immediately rejects her advances and walks away with his pride intact like the bloody pounding god he is. Chloe the Keymaster. You know it. Dude, I don't know about this. We're both already in so much trouble. Not to mention the weed you brought into my room. Joking. I'm serious. We're not kids anymore. We're breaking and entering. If I have a key, how can it be breaking? They can't charge us for just entering. It's called trespassing, Chloe, you fucking re- I'm serious. We could go to jail. Not if I'm related to the head of Blackwell security. Step sh will not want me in the hands of the local police. So we better find out what's in the principal's office first. You can rewind if we get caught, right? You have mad powers, Max. But my powers didn't save Kate. Maybe I did on my own. Come on, one more door and our work here is done. That's it. What the fuck? The security officer should have the key to the principal's office. He's hiding shit, like everybody here. Well, now we definitely have to get this door open. Believe it or not, I know a little about lockpicking, thanks to Frank. I might as well test out my thief skill. Go for it. We're already in this deep. Well, you could look for the key, just in case. Boring. No key for thee. We have to find another way in. Guess I didn't spend enough time with Frank, but I'll use my DIY lockpick tools while you come up with a better plan. Since Chloe clearly isn't subscribed to the lockpicking lawyer on YouTube, we resort to plan B. Making a f***ing pipe bomb and blowing the door up. <laughs> to do this, we simply need to... Yeah. Uh, Life is Strange straight up tells you how to make a pipe bomb. Ingredients and all. I'm not gonna show it to you. That sh can get me a strike. Listen, if you really want to know, just do one or two Google searches, or hell, even play the game for yourself. But, uh, I personally can't risk it. After making our little IED by re Redacted. We head on over to the door and get ready to join the Taliban. Get ready to haul ass. That was so f***ing cool! Oh, we are toast! Here comes the whole Arcadia Bay Fire and Police Department! Uh, so what should we do?
can get this bastard open, she can't cheat with her rewind. Oh, this is bullshit. You door. Welcome to my domain. You are magic! I have no clue how the hell you got in there, but you did it, sister. Now with the door unlocked after rewinding, we scrounge through the office for files on various suspects responsible for the disappearance of Rachel. We get the goods and get ready to head out, when Chloe decides to hit a devious lick. We should definitely get out of here. We pressed our luck enough. Hello, what have we here? Holy shit! Jackpot! She finds a letter named Handicap Fund with 5,000 petro dollars inside, to which she lets us call the shot of whether or not to take it. Are you gonna make a big issue out of this? Or just rewind and take the greenbacks for yourself? I hope you do that instead of lecturing me. We are again presented with one of life's strange hardest choices. Do we A. Steal from the handicapped, or B. Not be a piece of human sh so naturally, we steal the money. Now nah, they'll walk it off, it's fine. Frank knows things about Rachel, and he might talk if he's been paid, right? You are Supermax. And with the leftover dough, I'll take you on a road trip to Portland for the day. We'll stock up on tats, beer, weed, and donuts, and books from Powell's, and strip clubs. Now with the bag secured, Chloe leads us to the indoor swimming pool, where they shoot the shit, and to be honest, it's incredibly f***ing boring. So we're gonna skip to when they get out. Gross. I feel like we just went swimming in Chlorine Bay. You look cute with your hair soaked in chemicals. Thanks. You would know. Hide! Hide. Make sure you cover the whole perimeter. Are you shitting me? Dude, hide! Like when we were kids! This is Life is Strange's only stealth section, and to be honest, I really like it. It's short, tense, and the flashlight spinning around causes anxiety about if your hiding spot is good enough. It's great. I, I really like it. You can't go back to your dorm now. You're a Blackwell fugitive. Crash at my place tonight. You want me to crash where the Blackwell security officer lives so I'll be safe? Okay. Making our escape, Max and Chloe burst out of there. Get in! <laughs> Later, fuckers! Max, you rock! We are so fucking awesome! <laughs> yes, we so are. Ignoring the fact that Chloe's dad probably saw her car earlier, or the fact that Chloe's car appears in the driveway when he gets home. Now waking up in the morning, we remember that our clothes are soaked in sweet, sweet, yummy chlorine. Luckily for us, Chloe offers up some of her clothes in exchange for a kiss. I dare you to kiss me. What? I double dare you. Kiss me now. We only f man ass in this home. All right, come back with some Mustafo cosplay and I'll consider it. Sorry, not that easy. Oh, like I am? Just admit that you already macked on me, then used your rewind. Now I can text Warren that you're saving yourself all for him. I am so going to best unfriend you for that. <laughs> going downstairs for some breakfast with Joyce, we learn a little bit more about Chloe's detest for her father, learning that he died in a car crash while going to pick up Joyce from her job. Joyce then gives us a photo of Chloe being the last photo Chloe's real dad ever took. Did you guys have a bonding session about how f***ed up I am? It's not always about you. Chloe, please, it's too early to start picking a fight. Eat instead. I'll keep the warden busy while you go peek in the garage. Now stop whispering or I'll know you're talking about me. Stop being so nosy, mother. Jeez, I can't do anything around here without everybody getting up in my shit. Oh, no one can even joke with you, Chloe. You fly off the handle like that. Excuse me, I have to use the bathroom. Sure, run off and pee when you should back me up. Now who's being paranoid? Just listen to yourself. Nobody else does. I do need to get into David's computer. He's gotta be hiding shit. No shit, it needs a password. Score! Max the hacker strikes again. Whoa, spoiler alert. Rachel definitely hooked up with Frank. 
Why does David care? Leaving the house after searching through Chloe's dad's files, to no avail, we head back to the Toolwells Diner with Chloe to search through Frank's trailer for clues about Rachel's disappearance. To get into Frank's RV, we need to coerce him into giving up his keys, or by simply taking them. This can be done two different ways. By getting Frank to make fun of you by dangling them in front of him, or by getting him to bring out a picture of him and Rachel to which he empties his pockets out on the table. You know I saw that photo Rachel gave you. Uh, uh, how do you know about that? Huh? Chloe, right? She just told me that one of Rachel's favorite pictures was the one she did for you. Really? Yeah, I mean, that's what I thought. She was just a natural beauty, you know? Wait, wait, let me, let me find it. Here, judge for yourself. I'm afraid I'll have to take your keys now, asshole. You did not just do that. Give me back my keys, bitch. Give me my keys now! Key brought. Now back to Chloe. I should have known. The amazing Spider Max. I couldn't have done it without Frank. Now let's get in and out. You'll need this, Max. On your mark, get set. Throw! Another choice, and this one's a doozy. Do we A, murder his dog, or B, not murder his dog? So of course we murdered his dog. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Of course I didn't kill the dog. Get the treat, treat boy. I think we just made that dog our bitch. Get it? Now we can snoop in peace, but let's not waste time. The doggy is busy now, but he might come back. Damn, I thought my room was a shithole. You're not a creepy drug dealer. Frank has issues, but he's not creepy. At least I didn't think so until I saw him with Rachel's bracelet. Oh, we could cruise everywhere in this bad boy! Can you see us heading down the coast to Big Sur and beyond? Yes, we'd be tearing up the highway. And you dare me to drive it like you dared me to kiss you? Chloe, we're on a schedule. We need clues about Rachel. I know. Just daydreaming. Once inside, we can find love letters and pictures that Rachel sent Frank, showing us that Frank really was being honest when he referred to Rachel's bracelet being a gift. That makes me ill that Rachel posed like this for Frank. I wrote him love letters. I can't believe she was banging Frank. Rachel straight up lied to my face. Why didn't she say anything? Because she knew how you would react. And she wasn't much of a friend, huh? Just another person who shits all over me. Why does everybody in my life let me down? My dad gets killed, you bail on me for years, my mother gloms on a step -fucker. now Rachel betrays me. Chloe, Rachel is missing. Nobody betrayed you. Bullshit! You totally defended step stalker! everybody. Chloe! To this revelation, Chloe gets upset and storms out of the RV, throwing Frank's car keys on the roof. <coughs> Chloe, you can't keep blaming me and everybody for everything wrong in your life. It's so not fair. I gotta blame somebody, otherwise it's all my fault. F*** that. Grow up! God! You're not the only one in Arcadia Bay with problems. Kate Marsh almost... Yes, Kate Marsh almost killed herself. Such sad, okay? That doesn't make me feel any better about my f***ed up life. Get it? So who do you most want to blame? My f***ing dad, of course. Hello? You blame David? I said my dad. My real father who got himself killed for nothing. Not the human placeholder for Joyce. Chloe, your dad didn't choose to leave you. I know that, Max. My mom actually blames herself. Just because she wanted a ride home from work. Sometimes, even I blame her. No, you don't. Yes, Max, I do. Do you know what it's like to wait for your father to come home when you're a kid? And he never does? No, of course not. 
But I was with you that day. It was just a terrible accident. I wish that made me feel better. But ever since he died, my life has been dipped in shit. You don't want to hear this, but you're still here. Alive. With me. And that is no accident. You're right. I don't want to hear this. Chloe, I can't do this out on my own. I need you with me. And Rachel needs you. When Chloe drops us off at Blackwell, she won't even look at us. Now reminiscing about our past with Chloe by looking at the photo, Max seems to notice something peculiar. Oh my god! What is happening now? Someday Dad will get one of them newfangled computers. I hope the flash didn't scare you, Max. This is a keeper. Not until I see it first! You know the rules, Dad! Max, tell him! Whoa, hey. You look totally pale. Are you okay? Yeah. I just... Uh... Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, Chloe. Give me the thumbs up or thumbs down. Well... I might just allow this one into the family album. You're the boss. What is this? But not the cook. William is can't here. Daddy. Yes, and we can't Chloe is just a kid. And serve us slackers. Am I Who that far back in France? time? You mean pancakes? In France, they call them. Crates. I'm 18 years and old inside my 13-year-old self. If you want to eat. Breakfast. How? Max, now given the ability to temporarily travel back in time, saves Chloe's dad by getting rid of his car keys, forcing him to take the bus instead, instead of getting into a car wreck. I know I had those keys right here, I know it. Forgot all about you, little buddy. Release the keys! Of course. Last time I ordered from Spy Guy Electronics. You can take the bus, right? The stop is right down the street. This I can do. Good call, Max. Oh yeah, the bus is great. It comes every 15 minutes and, and there'll be plenty of room for you and, and Joyce and groceries and, and it'll save the environment. You sold me already. I'm off to yonder bus stop. Uh, Joyce will love this. Max, you are being so fucking strange. You feel okay? Chloe, I am awesome. We are awesome. However, time travel has consequences, and the butterfly effect is brutal. Hello, are you even listening, Maxine? All my friends in LA told me that Oregon was Max. Really wet and cold every day. But Never like Maxine. So that's why she was laughing so much. I know. Sorry, Mad Is Max. <laughs> You're not pissed at me, right? Right? Do you want to go hit the girls' potty and smoke a peace pipe? I think Max is high. She's acting like so weird. You cool, Max? Nobody listened when I said we shouldn't let her in the vortex. Courtney, you don't want anybody in the club. Like whatever, bitch. Warren, he hooked up with Stella? Oh no, this is totally f***ed up. What else have I changed? Chloe.
Max Caulfield. Taking a break after taking Seattle by storm, huh? Hmm. We thought we'd never see you again after you left for the big city. No. I'd never do that to Chloe. Speaking of, I know she's been dying to see you. Hold on. Chloe! You have a visitor! It's weird hanging out with you again. I know. I'm glad we are, though. It was nice that you sent me actual letters. It's more than any of my other friends have done. And you even wrote on that cool parchment paper. It's so Max. So pretentious. But I love writing on it like an English poet. You deserve the best stationery. Probably easier to write than to visit me. I don't mean that in a pretty way. Not totally. You probably wanted to avoid awkward conversations like this. Uh, pretty much, yeah. But the worst thing you can do is treat me like a baby. I still want to laugh and talk shit with my best friend. Can we stop? This is seriously the best view of the sunset. What do photographers call that? The golden hour. See? Without you here, I'd have no clue. Bet you could take some amazing shots. Those beached whales are so sad. I kind of know how they feel. At least, I'm alive here with you. You're a real survivor, Chloe. I know you have to deal with so much. I don't want anybody else feeling sorry for me. I can do that. Along with my parents. My dad still feels guilty about buying me that car. Are you okay to talk about the accident? We never actually have, huh? There's not much to say. Some prick in an SUV cut me off and I flew into a ditch. Do you remember everything? I saw everything in bullet time. I felt my back snap and was the last thing I ever felt in my body. When I woke up in the hospital, I literally couldn't move a muscle. Jesus. I, I, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. I'm just happy I did get to see you again. I could have ended up vanishing out of the blue like that girl from Blackwell. You mean Rachel Amber? When was the last time you talked to her? Uh, never. I just read about her in the news. I didn't even know her name. You did? This is such a different world than when we were kids, isn't it? After that snow and eclipse, it's more like the end of the world. It might be, but... I'd like to think we can still change things for the better. I'd like to think that too. But I don't have much hope these days. I know things seem out of control, but... As long as we're together, I don't feel afraid. Hanging out with you makes me feel like a total kid again. You don't even know. Listen, Chloe, I'm sorry I haven't been out to see you more. That was wrong. You're my best friend. Max, thanks for coming out to see me. You're, you're doing awesome. I don't think so. Um, 
My, my nose is getting cold. Maybe we should get back to my place? It is hella cold out here. Hella? I hate that word, no offense. None taken. In this timeline, Chloe is far more mature, likely due to her living through being paralyzed and all the changes and challenges it brought with it. The horror of being paralyzed has clearly scarred Chloe and turned her harsh, abrasive attitude into a reserved one. We head back to Chloe's house and into her room, filled with high-tech medical equipment to help Chloe live a normal life. Inside it, we chat with Chloe a bit and then decide to watch a movie together. I cannot believe you fell asleep so fast. How dare you? I know you were beat down after the day with me, and Blade Runner is a pretty dreamy movie to watch at night. Uh, do you do you think Deckard is a replicant? Sorry, I can see you're not wide awake like me. No, I'm sorry I crashed so hard. Were you okay? I do have a mother and father when you're not falling asleep on me. You are a bit in the morning. It's the company I keep. Yesterday was such a blast. It was great seeing you. I know things were different when we were just dorky kids, but being with you made me feel like when we were little pirates jumping and running through the forests again. It meant a lot to me just to chill out with you and, and bullshit. Um, I'm getting my regular head pains. Uh, can you pretty please go upstairs and get my, my morphine injector in the bathroom? Morphine injector? It's, uh, it's total Star Trek shit. You can't even see the needle. Seriously, I, I need it. Um, my parents keep this wag upstairs because they think I can't get to it. But you can, Max. Like a pirate, right? I'm on it, Chloe. To get to the morphine, we must make our way upstairs past Chloe's old room, giving us a moment to collect our thoughts and relax after such a big change. Now with morphine in hand, we can go help Chloe downstairs. Finally. Uh, give me the blue pill. With the painkillers administered, Chloe asks to look back at some of the photos of the two of you when you were young. Is that okay? Perfect. Oh my god, look how little we are there. We look like toys. I remember that day by the lighthouse. My dad was pissed at us. He actually tried to give us a time out. And you laughed at him. <laughs> my dad would have banished me. Whoa, awesome picture. We look so badass in our pirate gear. We should have taken over Arcadia Bay when we had the chance. There's still time for you. Oh man, there we are making pancakes. I love that shot of us. It's hard to believe my dad took that picture only five years ago. Literally seems like yesterday. I wish it was. Me too. This photo... Maybe I could... Listen, Max, my respiratory system is failing and, uh, and it's only getting worse. I've heard the doctors talking about it when they thought I was zonked out. So I know I'm just putting off the inevitable while my parents suffer along and I will too. This isn't how I want things to end. What? What are you saying? I'm saying that being with you again has been so special. I just wanted to feel like when we were kids running around Arcadia Bay and everything was possible and you made me feel that way today. I want this time with you to be my last memory. Do you understand? Yes, I do. All you have to do is crank up the IV to 11. What would you do if a paralyzed person 
asked to die. If I were in that position, and I knew my early death was inevitable, and my parents are carrying the burden of every second my life costs them, maybe I'd ask the same. It's up to Chloe in my opinion, and I can't bring myself to refuse. Chloe, I'll just drift asleep, dreaming of us here together. Forever. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you for following your dreams. Don't forget about me. Never. I love you, Max. See you around. Sooner than you think. The silence in this scene is piercing. Nothing more than the gentle hum of ventilation and far away car engines. It is now that Max makes a decision I wouldn't wish on anybody. I'm sorry, William. Someday Dad will get one of them newfangled computers. I hope the flash didn't scare you, Max. This is a keeper. Hello? Hey, honey. What? Oh, I didn't know you had to get groceries. Of course I'll come pick you up. Shit, where are my keys? That's a dollar for the swear jar. You mean your college fund? Aha! You can't hide from me forever! Burning the photograph that took her to this choice in the first place, she seals William's fate. Tonight your mother promised to make us a world famous salmon surprise with chocolate cake for dessert. Max, you'll be here too, right? She's never leaving me! That makes all of us. Max, you are being so f***ing strange. Like you're never gonna see us again. Chloe, I'm so sorry. I tried to make things different for you. I, I did try. I'm sorry. I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but come on. You have made things different, like my whole life. You're my best friend. I've got you and a great family. What's to be sorry for? We'll be best friends forever. And when we grow up, we're taking over the world. Listen, whatever happens, I want you to be strong. Even if you feel like I wasn't there for you. Because I will never abandon you, Chloe. I'll always have your back. Always. You're alive, yes! Oh yeah, now you suddenly want to kiss me? You had your chance. I'm just... I'm just, I'm so glad you're here. You sound high, but thanks for the morning grope. Since we were up all night playing CSI Arcadia Bay, I was still spaced out here trying to put all this info together. And we're back, baby. Now back in our original timeline, we get to doing some more serious detective work. There are three pieces of information that we need to gather. Pictures and locations from David, clientele list and purchase logs from Frank, and finally, Nathan's phone. Once we have these, we can find out exactly what happened to Rachel. First up, Chloe's dad, David. The evidence we need is in David's locker. To get into it, we either need to break it open with a crowbar, or if you're a 
fucking giga genius, genius like me remember what code the padlock was when it was opened before and punch it in. Boom, baby. David's down. Next up, Nathan's place. After doing some casual B and E, we move the couch and find Nathan's hidden phone and bail right in time before Nathan comes back. What are you doing in my dorm? You're such a nosy bitch, Max. Stop right there, Nathan. Make me ho. <clears throat> Max, I got this. Get the fuck out of my face. <clears throat> you are so fucking dead. <clears throat> Get off me, bro. <clears throat> <clears throat> Another choice. Did we A, stop Warren from beating up the guy that almost murdered our friend, or B, do we not do any of that sh and let that punk bitch Nathan get, get what, what he fucking deserves? Deserve. You like to hurt people, huh? Like Max? Like Kate? Like me? Huh? Feel this motherfucker? Get up off me! <laughs> Please stop! He's down. Hey, come on. Stop. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, we have to go. Who's the bitch now? Chloe! Damn, that was intense. Warren, uh, th thank you so much. For what? For beating the shit out of Nathan Prescott? Dude, you rule. I don't know. I kind of went crazy there. Like Nathan. You're not anything like him. Good to know. So where are you going? I better stick with you guys. Just in case you need me to get my Hulk on again. Or should I call the cops on Nathan? No police. Not yet. Uh, so maybe you better, um... Warren, me and Max have to do this on our own. No offense. It's cool. Whatever I can do to help. What you can do is find out anything you can about Nathan's father. I'm on it. Between the snow and eclipse, I'm assuming the apocalypse is around the corner. And thank you. Seriously. I'll call you later. You better. I'm feeling pretty alpha now. Yes, you are. Man, that guy is so fing in love with you. I know. He really did give a serious beat down to Nathan. It was a little scary to watch him do that. Now let's make a date with Frank. Now with Nathan out of the way, we only got one more pawn between us and finding out what happened to Rachel. The only thing we have to do now is convince drug dealer Frank to hand over incriminating information about how many drugs he sold. And as you may expect, it's not as easy as it sounds. Oh, look. The Wonder Twins. You should have come alone. She's my partner. Yeah, we're bodyguard. So let's get to business. Where's my fucking money? Oh, I thank you. That wasn't so hard, now was it? And let's not do any more business again. Now, if you excuse me. Frank? Could we ask you a couple quick questions? You have some serious lady balls. No. Jesus, okay. Okay. But I'm not getting you high. Frank, we're not here to get high. No. You don't look like the type. Not like Chloe here. So what do you hardy boys want? Just the names of some of your clients. Oh, is that all? Oh, well, why didn't you just tell me? How about I just give you the keys to my RV while I'm at it? Listen, Frank. 
I'm sorry to be such a nuisance, but this is important. Yeah, yeah, everything's important these days. But I can tell you're not bullshitting me. There's no time for that, Frank. I, I just need a little bit of information. Yeah, yeah, well, it always starts with just a little. And Chloe here knows all about that, don't you? Come on, Frank, this isn't about me now. Yeah, right, okay. Both of you are giving me a headache. No deal. Frank, we didn't come here to fight. This is so much bigger than us. Oh, yeah, you didn't come here to fight. A day after, you pulled a fucking gun on me. I... I am so sorry about that. It might be the dumbest thing I've ever done. And I've done a lot of dumb things this week. Finally, I believe you. But don't ever aim a gun at anybody unless you intend to kill. Although you don't look like you could kill a bug. I... I try not to. And I never would have pulled the trigger. I was just... Dude, she was scared, all right? You pulled your blade on me. We were all freaked out. Now we're all cool. Please? Okay. We're cool for now. But my dog is... And if you try any shit, he will bite your head off. He's done it before. We're only here to talk. I wouldn't mess with your dog. Shit, you wouldn't have time. You like dogs? Of course I do. I heard you even rescued a bunch of fight dogs. That's amazing. No, all right, it was just the right thing to do. I couldn't stand to see those poor animals treated like, like slaves. And that's how I came to own Pompadou. That's very cool, Frank. Your dog is lucky you came along. Maybe we can focus on rescuing Rachel now? Rachel? Is that why you're really here? Yes, we're so close to finding her now, Frank. We need all the help we can get now. Especially from you. You and Chloe do not know Rachel like I did, and I couldn't even help her. You're in way over your heads. Why don't you just go play in your clubhouse? Frank, you knew Rachel almost better than anybody. And you know more than us. Together, we could find her. Do you have anything to lose? When Rachel vanished, I pretty much lost everything. I can't stand not knowing where she is. Not hearing her voice or her laugh anymore. We can change all that. It's up to you. Help us find her, Frank. Please. We really need your client list. Well, if there's a chance in hell you two dorks can find Rachel, yeah, I'll take it. My dog isn't barking at you, so I guess that's a good sign. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Frank. Seriously. It's hard to take you characters seriously, but I want to. Good luck. You can hear the desperation in Frank's voice. I don't doubt for a second that he really did love Rachel. And with that, we start to put the pieces together. First, we must decode the names of Frank's logs by cross-referencing Nathan's codename Rot for Rottweiler, with sales of drugs to Nathan. Next, we can identify Nathan's car and cross-reference it with the tracking done by David to find out where Nathan has been. Lastly, we have to guess Nathan's pin, which is simply his birthday, which since this is a game made in America, the month goes before the day. So if you're a European watching this, f you. Go put a flag on the moon and then we can talk. Now, with all the clues in place, not only can we find out where Nathan took Kate after that party where he drugged her, but also the drug Nathan used, that being GHB. Chloe, this is definitely the place. Let me dig up some more clothes here. Nope. Nothing, Max. There's nothing here. Just some old barn. Let's keep searching and find out who owns this haunted barn. I'm on this. Hold on. Somebody named Harry Aaron Prescott. I'm shocked. Should we call the police? Fuck that. You know the police here are like Nathan's private security, right? 
That's so messed up. As you've noticed, this whole town is messed up. We can't trust anybody, except each other. So we have to go out to that farmhouse by ourselves. I was afraid you'd say that. We could call Warren since he kicked Nathan's ass. It's just the two of us, nobody else. And I'm not scared at all. You have the power. I feel like we're this close to finding Rachel. We have to find her, Max. We will. But remember, my power isn't infinite. We still have to be careful. Do you hear, Chloe? Yes, sir. Tracking Nathan's car, we can find out where he took Kate, an abandoned farmhouse, which is a cover for something far more sinister than you could imagine. After doing some digging, literally, we find a solid metal hatch covering up something. Solving a puzzle, we manage to open it. And what's inside is a reality so grim, it puts Chloe in denial. Oh yes! I thought that only worked in the movies. Open sesame. Stocked and ready for the apocalypse. This must have cost a fortune. Come on. Come on, let's see what this shit is all about. We are. Okay. A binder marked Victoria, but it's empty. Look, the next one says Kate. Oh no, Kate. No. God, I should have killed that bastard back there. Kate wasn't the first. All those binders are filled with other victims. <sighs> Victoria has to be next. Nathan must be planning to dose her tonight at the Vortex Club party. Rachel. This can't be real. These are all, these are all post shots, right? Right? Chloe, look at her face. She's out of it. Maybe, maybe Nathan paid her a shitload of cash to do this. She probably would have. I don't think so. Why is he putting her in the ground like that? Where? The junkyard. Max, we have to find that spot now. Then, then we can see what he did. There's no way she's dead. No way. She posed for those pictures, Max. I know it. Please, let's go. Slow down! Wait for me! I know exactly where I'm going! Look! This is it! This is it! Are you gonna help me, Max? Chloe, stop! Look! No. Oh. Oh. That smell. Rachel. Oh. No, Rachel, no, no, please, not her. <laughs> Chloe. <laughs> Rachel, why? I'm sorry, Chloe. I'm so sorry. I loved her so much! How can she be dead? What kind of world does this? Who does this?
I hope Nathan enjoys his last party. Chloe, we can go right to the cops. We have proof. Fuck the police. Rachel wanted us to find her. So we could get real justice. And revenge. The Prescotts have had this coming for a hundred years, and nobody is gonna get in my way. Especially with your help. Right? I'm with you to the end, Chloe. You know that. Now armed with knowledge and a revolver, we go to find Nathan. Now inside, we sneak our way into the VIP area backstage, warn Victoria, but not find Nathan. When Chloe gets a text from his phone, mocking us by disposing of Rachel's body. Oh Christ, Nathan just texted me. He says there won't be any evidence left after he's done. Shit. We have to go to the junkyard right now. Stomping around, Chloe. Right. Just get ready to use your rewind fast if Nathan tries to jump us. Going to check it out. Our night just somehow keeps getting worse. Chloe, come over here, quick. Oh God, Max, look. She's still there. Don't look, Chloe. We wake up in the dark room, strapped to a chair, alone, under harsh white lights. We can also see Victoria lying on the ground to our left, something I've never seen before until now. This is because I'm not usually able to convince Victoria that her life is in danger, due to my willingness to kick her while she was down in the first chapter. Now, it almost seems like a mistake to warn Victoria. If it weren't for our warning, she wouldn't be here. <sighs> Finally, I'm free. <laughs> Almost. Now with one free leg, we pull over a tray and look at the photograph on top, hopefully to find any sort of way to make it out of this nightmare. This angle highlights your purity, see? The slightly unconscious model is often the most open and honest. No vanity or posing, just pure expression. Oh Christ, look at that perfect face. This is where we see Mr. Jefferson's true colors. Instead of the charismatic and reserved teacher we thought he was, he was a manic psychopath willing to destroy lives in the pursuit of what he calls art. Jefferson is a far more nasty person in private. Hold that stare there! Stay! Still! Belittling Max to her face while she's unable to fight back. Not only this, 
but also Nathan, who, as he explains, killed Rachel Amber accidentally in an attempt to replicate Mr. Jefferson's work. We also learn how Nathan texted us instead of Jefferson, killing Nathan and luring you and Chloe to the secluded junkyard where he was waiting to ambush us. Max, please do not move so much. I need you posed and framed my way. Maybe a new dose will calm you oh, down. No. No. <laughs> Now don't move, or this will hurt much. Stupid bitch! By kicking the tray, we spill what's left of the drug Mr. Jefferson is using to sedate us, leading to us sobering up when we return from this memory. Whoa! I I'm definitely more awake in this photo. I could try this one. This might work. Please work. I'm getting some spectacular images here, Max. Yes, Victoria would kill to be in your place, but she doesn't understand our connection. Mr. Jefferson, why are you doing this? Oh, Max, I'm so glad you asked that question. Simply put, I'm obsessed with the idea of capturing that moment innocence evolves into corruption. That shift from black to white to gray and beyond. Most models are cynical. They lose that naivete. However, some Blackwell students carry their hope and optimism with them like an aura. And those lucky few become my models, my subjects. You will not get away with this. I want you to know that. Too bad you already made a convincing argument against Nathan in the principal's office. Thank you so much for setting him up for me. I do know that the Prescotts are going to have a major scandal when the town finds out what their elite son has been doing for homework. You used Nathan. I prefer the term manipulated, like with an image. Nathan's was easy to twist around. I became a sort of father figure for Nathan. It happens often in teacher-student relationships. It was kind of touching for a while. Did you tell him everything about your plans at Blackwell? Don't be stupid, Max. I told him what he needed to hear. In return, I had access to the Prescott fortune. Who do you think paid for this glorious darkroom and equipment? How else could I get all these hip new drugs for my subjects? Okay. Now, let's see how these shots came out. Wait. Please, uh, Mr. Jefferson. Max. I would love to talk shop, but I really need to go over these pictures. Especially while they're fresh in my mind. I think our session was a career high for me. You... you still have my diary. Don't worry. Nobody's going to read it. Thanks for reminding me. There's nothing more innocent than a teenager's diary. Oh, look at your selfies. What a waste of talent. Look at that shot, Max. You can do so much better. Guilting Jefferson into throwing us our diary, we're able to dive into the selfie we took at the start of the game. I could frame any one of you in a dark corner and capture you in a moment of desperation. Now back at the start of the game, we find David's phone number in his school pamphlet and send him all the necessary information to busk Mr. Jefferson before he's able to kill Chloe. Before we're taken back, however, we get a chance to speak to both Victoria and Mr. Jefferson, knowing what we do now. Berating Victoria for her role in the attempted self nay nay by Kate and alluring to knowing about the dark room to Jefferson. Whoa! Waking up from the photo, our surroundings have been completely changed. We're on a plane en route to San Francisco after winning the Everyday Heroes Contest. Joining us is Principal Wells. Once at the Everyday Heroes Contest, we go to mingle with the fellow art snobs at the gallery, before having another vision of that damn tornado. Hey! 
Hey, are you okay? We lost uh, you there for a second. Your nose. I'm okay. Uh, jet lag. High altitude. Oh, you left the ringer off, idiot. Oh, come on. Please answer. What? Oh no. Chloe, where are you? I'm so fing scared. I'm, I'm by the beach. I'm Chloe! Just can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Knowing that the tornado is destroying Arcadia Bay while we were off in San Francisco, we do the only thing we can think of descending further into a reality more and more off course from our own. Now four photos deep, the walls around us are closer than ever, corrupting our memories. I just have to make one simple change, so I won't end up in San Francisco. Simple. Sorry, San Francisco. Chloe comes first. Oh, f God, no! I'm back here again? I thought I fixed everything! What did you say, Max? What? Jefferson should be in jail, not here. Sorry. I burned all your stuff. I got a little carried away. Fuck. He you burned my diary. Always. That's why I'm still here. Especially since you've developed from nerd to hero within a week. There's something... weird going on with you. Whoa. Did you see how crazy it is outside? Jefferson, please, don't do this. You don't know what's happening. Shh, 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 shh. Quiet. Quiet, Max. Please, don't do this. This final dose won't hurt. And just as Jefferson is about to give us our final lethal injection... What? Damn. No, David! No! Using our rewind powers, we can help David win the fight with Jefferson. No gun, no balls. Jefferson, it's over. Oh, Lord, Max. Are you okay? Are you all right? Can you move? Yes. Thank you, David. Thank you. No, thank me. You brought me here. Let's wrap up this son of a bitch first. <gasps> he won't be going anywhere when he wakes up. Except you are going to prison forever. Or worse. Now with Jefferson restrained and us freed, we have one last opportunity to speak with David before we leave. To which we have to make the choice of whether or not to tell David about Chloe's death. And if you do, David does what any good man should do when in the same room as their daughter's killer. David, uh, Chloe is, is dead. This isn't happening. It can't. 
No, God. Not Chloe. Max, are you are you sure? Are you Yes, I I saw her. I I saw a Jefferson killer in the junkyard. Last night. Last night? When I was so close to finding out the truth? I promised Joyce that I would protect her and Chloe. How can I face her and explain this? I never even told Chloe that I... I God damn it! You killed my wife's child, you sick fucker! And you took away my stepdaughter! David, wait! Max, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to see that. What a mess. What have I done? All that time I wasted with surveillance. Uh, Chloe, I'm sorry. Joyce, I failed you. My family. You didn't fail. You did your best. Max, you better get outside. You've seen enough of this room. David, thank you for saving me. Now that we're outside, we had to find our only opportunity to go back in time and save Chloe. A picture Warren took of us and him before Chloe went into the party. On the drive over to the diner, we listened to a message left by Nathan before he died, showing us his true colors under his tough guy mask. Max, it's, it's Nathan. I, I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. I didn't want to hurt Kate or Rachel or... or... I didn't want to hurt anybody. Everybody used me. <laughs> Mr. Jefferson is coming for me now. All this shit will be over soon. <laughs> Watch out, Max. He wants to hurt you next. I'm sorry. Now with our car blocked, the only way to progress is on foot. Making our way past all the people begging for help, we arrive at the Two Whales Diner just in time to hopefully fix our wrongs into rights. Inside, we confessed to Warren about our involvement with the tornado, and presented with an option to kiss Warren. We absolutely fucking do. Warren beat the fuck out of that asshole, bro. A kiss is the least we can do. For luck. Just in case we don't get out of this, I wanted to say... I know, Lauren. Of course you do. Now with no other option, we focus on the photo, sending us back in time before Chloe gets shot. In this small opportunity, we take the chance to warn Chloe and to convince her to stay safe while David busts Jefferson himself. Now, back in our original timeline, we've seemingly set everything up correctly to save Chloe's life. But the tornado still appears, tearing Arcadia Bay to shreds no matter how much we try to avoid it. And for one more time, we pass out and are sent into a nightmare. The lighthouse is out of the way of the tornado. Come on! Chloe, I've got your back, Max. What comes next is the most unsettling scene I've ever experienced. Whoa! Alfred Hitchcock famously called film "little pieces of time." I'm but back in class. As he what the hell? Was. These pieces of time can frame us in our glory. And I have our to listen to this Jefferson lecture again. This might be hell. Now, 
Can you give me an example of a photographer okay, who perfectly this captured is the human up. condition in black and white? A am I stuck in a time loop? Anybody? Bueller? Diane Arbus. Be calm and there you go, don't Gloria. freak out. Why Arbus? Yet. Because of her images of hopeless faces, you feel like totally haunted by the eyes of those sad mothers and children. She saw humanity as Wait, torture, right? What's going on? And frankly, it's bullshit. Nobody even cares? Shh, shh, shh. Keep that to yourself. Seriously, though, I could frame any one of you in a dark corner and capture you in a moment of desperation. Everybody's gone now. Have I totally f***ed up time? This doesn't make sense. Birds seemingly throwing themselves into a window, painting it red till the entire room turns a dark red tone. And while it was cool, what gameplay comes next is easily Life is Strange's worst part. It's very clear that the intended ending for Chapter 5 wasn't long enough to justify the cost of it, leading to a nightmare sequence as if the gods that gave us this power were mocking us for using it. In this nightmare sequence, we have to stealth around various characters we've seen before, but the consequences for us getting caught just aren't there, since you can rewind anytime you get caught anyways. After that, we're sent back to the diner where we convince Chloe in Chapter 2, only to have it be filled with the game's characters berating Max for causing the storm, as well as a clone of Max who does the same. After finally coming back to reality, we stand atop the mountain next to the lighthouse, where Chloe asks us to do what we've tried so desperately to avoid. Max! Max, can you hear me? Please say something! Chloe? I, I must have passed out. Oh, thank Sorry. God. Don't you ever do that again, okay? I swear. But that nightmare was so real. It was so horrible. My storm! I caused this! I caused all of this! I changed fate and destiny so much that I actually did alter the course of everything! And all I really created was just death and destruction! F*** all that, okay? You were given a power, you didn't ask for it, and you saved me! Which had to happen, all of this did! Except for what happened to Rachel. But without your power, we wouldn't have found her! Okay, so you're not the goddamn Time Master, but you're Maxine Caulfield. And you're amazing. Max. This is the only way. I feel like I took the shot a thousand years ago. You... You could use that photo to change everything right back to when you took that picture. All that would take is for me to... To... That. No. No way. You are my number one priority now. You are all that matters to me. I know. You prove that over and over again. Even though I don't deserve it. I'm so selfish. Not like my mom. Look what she had to give up and live through. And she did. She deserves so much more than to be killed by a storm in a fucking diner. Even my, my stepfather deserves her alive. There's so many more people in Arcadia Bay who should live. Way more than me. Don't say that. I won't trade you. You're not trading me. Maybe you've just been delaying my real destiny. Look at how many times I've almost died or actually died around you. Look at what's happened in Arcadia Bay ever since you first saved me. I know I've been selfish, but for once, I think I should accept my fate. Our fate. Chloe. Max, you finally came back to me this week, and you did nothing but show me your love and friendship. 
You made me smile and laugh like I haven't done in years. Wherever I end up after this, in whatever reality, all those moments between us were real. And they'll always be ours. No matter what you choose, I know you'll make the right decision. Chloe, I can't make this choice. No, Max. You're the only one who can. This is the final choice in Life is Strange. Do we sacrifice Chloe to save Arcadia Bay, or do we sacrifice Arcadia Bay to save Chloe? On one hand, we have the fact that we spent the last week constantly trying to keep Chloe out of harm's way. If we save Arcadia Bay, not only will our friend be killed, but all the sacrifices we've made would be for nothing. On the other hand, are the lives and houses of hundreds of people in Arcadia Bay worth a single young girl? This choice, surprisingly, has the community quite divided, with the decision to sacrifice Chloe only gaining a majority by 2%. But in my eyes, the life of one is never worth the lives and homes of hundreds. Max, it's time. Chloe. I'm so, so sorry. I... I don't want to do this. I know, Max. But we have to. We have to save everybody, okay? And you'll make those fuckers pay for what they did to Rachel. Being together this week... It was the best farewell gift I could have hoped for. You're my hero, Max. Oh, Chloe, I'm gonna miss you so much. I'll always love you. Now get out of here, please. Do it before I freak. And Max Caulfield, don't you forget about me. It's cool, Nathan. <laughs> Don't stress. You, you're okay, bro. Just count to three. Don't be scared. You own this school. If I wanted, I could blow it up. <laughs> you're the boss. So what do you want? I hope you check the perimeter, as my step-ass would say. Now, let's talk business. I got nothing for you. Wrong. You got hella cash. You don't know who the fuck I am, or who you're messing around with! Where'd you get that? What are you doing? Come on, put that thing down! Don't ever tell me what to do! I'm so sick of people trying to control me! You are going to get in hella more trouble for this than drugs! Nobody would ever even miss your punk ass, would they? Get that gun away from me, psycho! Animals living under 
changing with you Someday we will foresee obstacles Through the blizzard Through the blizzard Today we will sail our uniform And live together together But what happens if you do pick the other option? Well, if you decide to sacrifice Arcadia Bay instead, Max will rip the photo of the butterfly that we took before saving Chloe, sealing ourselves into the timeline with the tornado. After the tornado passes, we get a few shots of Arcadia Bay in ruin before showing Max and Chloe leaving in Chloe's old beaten up truck, most likely on their way to Portland. I don't really like this ending, mainly due to us not only being selfish, but also because we disobey what Chloe wants. But I'm sure there were many others who liked Chloe enough to save her. Either way, let's wrap this up. Life is Strange is a game that I played when I was doing my finals to graduate high school here in Germany. And while I was worried to death about the consequences of possibly failing, Life is Strange sucked me out of my reality and into one where I could only dream of ending up. Now I'm sorry if this sounds like cringe or naive, but ever since I played Life is Strange, I've had this overwhelming urge to make it to small town America and live a life of peace and quiet like the inhabitants of Arcadia Bay do. You know, mi minus the tornado and shit. Like, <laughs> a place where my children won't have to feel danger when they walk home at night. A place where the roads aren't filled with poverty around every corner. A place where I can walk outside and listen to birds chirping while I drink my coffee. Because every time I boot up Life is Strange and hear that soothing